dribble it, pick it up with my pinky and thumb, boom. I was palming the ball every two to four hours, all day long, day after day, month after month, that I could just walk up to it with no hesitation and just quickly pick it up. Eventually what this will translate to is you'll be able to dribble the ball and just palm it off the dribble. I've got five drills that I used to do as a kid that you need to start doing right now. I know a lot, what a lot of you guys are thinking. You're like, look, my hands are small. It's never gonna happen. I'm not strong. I don't have good forearm strength. How long is it gonna take to develop that? Believe it or not, palming the basketball is not about forearm strength. It's much more of a coordination, just like shooting the basketball. So when I was a kid, and I started to learn this because what I realized was that my ability to palm the ball would come and go. There would be some days where I couldn't palm it. There would be some days when I could pick it up real easy off a dribble, and then the next day I couldn't. And what I learned was that it's a skill very much like shooting a jump shot because it's a coordination. And the reason it's a coordination is this. See, if I just squeeze the basketball with all my might, I actually make my hand smaller and at the same time, I push the ball away from me. See, look, watch. If I squeeze something, my hand gets smaller, right? And if I squeeze, my fingers push that way. So squeezing the basketball is not really what we're trying to do. Watch, boom, squeezing it pushes the ball away. What we're actually trying to do is to finesse the ball in just the right way with just the right coordination where I place it correctly and give it just the right amount of pressure that it's not gonna leave. See, I can do that even if I have a small hand, watch. So here's my, here's my normal size hand on the basketball, right? And then what if I, what if I just reduce the size of my hand? I'll just reduce it significantly. Boom. Okay. See how see how my hand is big. Now it's just going to get smaller. I can still palm the ball. See, it's much. Even though my hand just got much smaller, I can still palm it. And the reason is because it's a coordination. I first started palming the ball in sixth grade, and my hand went from thumb on this ridge to pinky on the second. Ridge. That's how big my entire hand was when I first started palming the basketball. Now, now my hand is much bigger. I can get my pinky almost to the third groove, okay? But I could palm it initially when it only came to this groove. And that's a pretty small hand. I was in sixth grade at the time and I was probably about five foot two. So you can palm a basketball. I hear a lot of times people talk about their hands are too small so they can never palm a basketball. They say things like, I was always able to jump, but I couldn't dunk because I couldn't palm the ball. Well, to me, this is not true. I think anybody can palm a basketball. So I've got five drills that I used to do as a kid that you need to start doing right now. Anytime you watch TV on your couch from now on, you have a ball in your hands with the specific purpose of squeezing it. Now, when I was young, I used to keep a spare basketball near the couch area so that it was always within reach anytime I turned the television on. Because you're sitting there for like an hour, 30 minutes, two hours. So you wanna be doing something productive. Put a ball in your hands. So that was my rule, was I was always squeezing a basketball. Not just holding it, not just tossing it around, but squeezing it until my forearms were burning. So that's number one for you guys, is to make that your rule. And then number two, is a workout set that I call brutal squeezes. What it is, is just holding the ball for 10 seconds, squeezing it with one hand, and pushing it into that hand with your opposite hand. And with the hand that you're squeezing it with, you're just grinding into this ball, just trying to push all the air out of it. And each second that goes by, you're squeezing even tighter, even tighter even tighter and it's burning that's why i call it brutal squeezes because we're not just gingerly massaging the ball we want our forearms on fire and then you switch hands and you do it with your other hand 10 seconds you'll see 10 seconds is a lot do three sets of that next i always wanted to be able to pick the ball up off of a dribble by palming it so what i used to work on all the time was dribbling the ball and trying to palm it but not everybody could do that initially. So what I used to do is I would simulate it by throwing the ball from one hand to the other and trying to palm it on the catch. Since your hand is facing this way, instead of facing this way, gravity is working in your favor. And it's much easier to palm the ball like this. So do about 
50 of these. One, two, three, four, five. And every time, I'm not just tossing it gingerly, you know, I'm squeezing. One squeeze, two squeeze, three squeeze, four squeeze. And this is part of your session when you're watching TV and have the ball in your hands, is throw the ball and work on pickup palming. Eventually what this will translate to is you'll be able to dribble the ball and just palm it off the dribble. And then the next drill are ball smacks. Now I know you've seen these with regard to ball handling where you pound the ball into one hand, pound the ball into one hand. But what I want you to do is I want you to pound the ball and on the hit, I want you to squeeze. It's gonna happen really fast. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. The next one I want you to work on is something that you can call ridge altering. And it involves the ridges of the basketball, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to try to palm the ball by putting your fingers on the ridges and then alter the placement of your fingers on the ridges. So you might go thumb pinky on the ridges, and then you might go thumb middle finger on the ridges, and then thumb index finger on the ridges. And what you're trying to do is simulate different catch scenarios when the ball might not be in the opportune spot in your hands, but you're still able to feel it out and palm it. You're still able to find the ridge, wherever that might be based on your catch, and squeeze it at just the right amount to palm. And then the last one is this. This is finger focused squeezing. So just like our brutal squeezes, we're gonna have the ball in one hand, trying to palm it, except instead of putting pressure through all of our fingers, we're gonna pick one finger, like my index, and squeeze it together with my thumb. So index and thumb are squeezing, only those two fingers. And we're gonna hold that for 10 seconds. And then we're gonna switch to middle finger and thumb together. Middle finger and thumb together are gonna to squeeze. Those squeeze together. Ah, just those two are squeezing. And then we go to our ring finger and squeeze those with my thumb. And then my pinky finger, squeeze those. So we're going through each finger individually. I've found this is a amazing way, amazing way. And my light just turned off, how embarrassing. Maybe I'll just dribble for the rest of the video. How about that? Uh, look, I want to get into what palming the basketball really, really means for you because it, it's not a technical skill. Palming the basketball, it's like really one of the most important things I ever did in my basketball life because it turned me into somebody who felt cool walking around with a ball all day. And it also made walking around with a ball pragmatic because like you, you can't live your life if you have to walk around with a basketball holding it with two hands. And if it's always gotta be in your gym bag, like it's not the same. You wanna walk around with a ball like a gangster, like with one hand, like this is how you wanna live. And until you can do this, you, you know, you can't really, you can't really like function with a ball. <laughs> like walking around your daily life, you know, like go to get coffee, you know, eating food, whatever it is, like, you know, doing your homework, you gotta hold the ball with one hand. So like I said, I started that in sixth grade and for me, it changed everything. It, it put the ball forever within my field of view at all times. And it put the ball forever in my hands, which meant that it put thoughts of basketball in my head at all times. It just, it just became like an alarm clock all day. Oh, think about basketball. Oh, think about basketball. Oh, think about basketball. Why, why would I think about basketball? Well, because there seems to be one very close to me. It seems to be in my hand. I know it sounds silly, but like it's, if you want to trigger thoughts about elephants, carry around a stuffed animal elephant. If you want to trigger thoughts about, you know, gambling and poker, tattoo a, a you know, an ace of spades on your wrist. If you want to think about basketball all day, if you want the distractions of your life to be fleeting and to give way to basketball thoughts constantly, then hold a basketball in your hand all day. That's what I used to do. It helps when people invite you places and you're like, hmm, I'm good. It helps when you get ideas about new hobbies that you might want to take up and you're like, oh, oh, there you are. No, I'm good. I'm good, new hobby. I, I, got, I got a ball. I'm good. You know, it, it, it just helps. So 
you know, palming a basketball for me is more like a metaphor for like palming your goal. It's like I'm literally walking around holding my goal in my hands. So when I was a kid, I did brutal squeezes every day. You know, the 10 second holds. Every single day I did them. I was obsessed with palming the basketball when I was young. Obsessed with it. Um, and I used to always have a goal that I was always able to pass the pickup test. And what the pickup test for me basically was, was that if the ball was laying on the floor, on the ground, that I could just walk up to it with no hesitation and just quickly pick it up off the ground. And so when I was young, not packing, passing the pickup test would look something like this. Like I would try to get it, oh, and miss it. Or I would fumble it or have to take my time. It would slip around and then eventually I would get it. But that was a fail. Passing the pickup test means I can just like stroll past the ball, boom, got it, palm. And so what I found was this. To maintain the ability to always pass the pickup test, I had to be sharp with palming the basketball, which meant I had to be between two and four hours removed of some type of palming exercise or activity. Two to four hours. And I always wanted to be able to pass the pickup test because like I was living with a basketball. So I was always in between like dropping it, leaving it somewhere, having to recoup it, having to pick it back up, having to put it in my bag. You know, I was probably picking up and putting down a basketball a hundred times a day or more. And I'm not talking about on the court, I mean off the court. And so I was always trying to do the pickup test during that time. And if I ever didn't pass the pickup test, I would actually get a whole lot of anxiety. Palming the basketball really gave me a lot of anxiety if I wasn't able to, if I wasn't sharp with it at any particular moment. And so, like I said, what I found is that you have to palm the ball every two to four hours in order to be able to, to pass the pickup test. And that's what I was doing as a kid. Probably starting at the age of about uh, 11. I was palming the ball every two to four hours, all day long. Day after day, month after month, you know, I was, I was never not palming the ball. And the funny thing is, is that people around you, they're not even gonna notice what you're doing. Like, it's normal to see a kid holding a basketball and nobody notices the difference if you're holding it with two hands or holding it with one hand. So nobody really notices what you're doing, but you're on like a, a palming quest. And so, you know, what does palming actually do for you as a player though on the court? Everybody thinks that it allows you to like do a triple threat like Michael Jordan, you know, <laughs> it allows you to do like, you know, show and tell, throw the, you know, pretend to throw the ball at somebody or that it gives you control if you're trying to dunk the ball. And all that's true. But what it really gives you is better control when you're holding the ball with two hands. See, because most of the time on a basketball court, you're holding the ball with two hands. And if you have incredible control with just one hand, suddenly when you put two of your incredible hands on it, you have great control over the basketball. And people aren't ripping this thing out of your hands. So that's really what palming the ball does for you. And I'll tell you, there was a period of my basketball career where all of my triple threats were palming the ball. It was one of my favorite things to do, and it still is actually. But in Europe, in Europe, you don't really have time during an isolation to stand there palming the ball. But when I was playing in America, this is how I played. And I guess the last thing I'll leave you with is this. I had a rule when I was a kid, which was that I never watched TV sitting on the couch without a ball in my hands, never. And I would put a spare basketball near the television set, like on the couch, under the couch, so that it was always accessible. If I like plopped down and got sucked into a movie or a TV show, I would be like, oh, I'm not just gonna sit here and not be productive. You know, I'm gonna have a ball in my hands. So that was my rule. So make that your rule. It'll not only allow you to work on palming the ball, but it'll get, the, it'll get basketball back into your head throughout your movie and throughout your day, it'll allow you to not be sidetracked. And so that was my rule, is I'm not allowed to watch TV unless I have a ball in my hands. And I adhered to that from about the age of like, probably 12 years old until about 16, probably about 75% of the time. I was never in front of a TV unless I had a ball in my hands. And I think that if you do that and you incorporate the drills that I showed you today, I mean, you'll be palming a ball in under a month. When I first started to try to palm a ball, I was in sixth grade, and it took me about a week and a half until I could do it. 
and I was not big at the time. I did not have big hands. I had small hands. Uh, you don't need big hands to palm a ball. You just need a commitment and a lot of time interacting with the ball and doing those drills that I showed you. So if you do that, you'll be palming the ball in no time. And good luck with it. it I just, man, I just hope you guys do this. It's been one of the greatest joys of my life. It's, it's just walking around as a kid, as a youngster, palming the ball, getting anxiety when my palming skills fall off, when I can't pick the ball up, being able to pick it up off the dribble. It's just been so rewarding. I love it. Um, it's all, you know what else it's done is it's also fueled, or it did fuel my passion for dunking. Because, you know, I was able to palm the ball with complete mastery for years before I was ever, ever able to dunk the ball. The fact that I could palm it so well put in my mind like a desire to put that skill to use, which naturally became like, well, I should work on my jumping. You know, I should be able, I should be able to do crazy dunks because I can already palm the ball like a, like a maniac. So it's time to start putting that to use. And I think that um, I probably wouldn't have worked on jumping so much if I hadn't worked on palming the ball so much for years beforehand. Nowadays I can palm the ball, you know, with, with two fingers. And, uh, you know, I can, I can do the pickup test with two fingers. So I dribble the ball, two fingers, pick it up. So if I throw it to, my, if I throw it to myself, boom. Pinky and thumb, that's all I need to palm it. So I can dribble it, pick it up with my pinky and thumb, boom, boom. That's it guys. I hope you learned something today. Actually, I know you did if you listened. Just go out and put this to use. Good luck.